Minecraft is no doubt a game that many, many people are fond of. It drove the YouTube landscape when it became popular as well as creating many childhood memories for many people, and as a child, I loved this game. It was relaxing and acted as a really good outlet for creativity. It was also really creepy. When I was a child, this was a game I didn't typically play when I was home by myself. Sure, the game was addicting, but it just had this uncanny atmosphere that made it feel like anything could pop out at me at any moment. And my firm belief in Herobrine certainly didn't help. So in light of the resurgence of this game and the very interesting iceberg videos that have blown up recently, I thought it would be fun to make one that not a lot of people have talked about. Minecraft. I'm using this image I found on Reddit, created by user Probot748, but before we start digging straight down, uh, let's lay down some ground rules. Not every single point in the image will be covered, this may be because I found absolutely nothing on the certain subject, it's too stupid to even mention, or it's entirely fan created and based off of nothing in the actual game. But with all of that out of the way, let's start descending down the iceberg. Herobrine. I'm not going to waste any time on this one. We all know who Herobrine is. He was an urban legend created from Minecraft's game developer, Notch, his dead brother. Turns out that Notch never even had a brother, and the game devs said several times that they don't plan on adding him in future updates either. Unfortunately. Disc 11. Disc 11 is a record you can play, and is the only disc that has visual damage to it. It's also the only disc that doesn't play music, but this incredibly disturbing audio of a man panting and running from something in what I presume to be a cave. From what I could find, there are absolutely no explanations for this audio, but there are several interesting theories, and if you play the track through a spectrogram, the audio will take the shape of Steve's head. End credits. Once you kill the Ender Dragon and jump into the portal that returns you to the overworld, there is a long poem that plays out, showing some really meta interactions between the player and some other entity, or as Notch would put it, silly and over the top, implying that this isn't supposed to be taken 100% seriously. Minecraft Education Edition. Apparently in 2016, there was a Minecraft game released specifically for classroom use. Infiniminer Inspiration. A mere month before Minecraft was released, there was a game similar to it called Infiniminer. There are a lot of people that claim Minecraft to be a ripoff of it, but most people would agree that Minecraft was merely inspired by it, as both of their looks and playstyles, while similar, are still very different. Far Lands. So in the Bedrock edition of Minecraft, there is a terrain bug where on the edge of the map, instead of there being nothing but water or just an infinite plane that isn't mapped, there are these massive deformed terrain structures that for some reason look very intimidating. This is caused by some bug where the game doesn't know where to stop, so it just makes up a bunch of random terrain and just creates it to go out forever. Nether Portal and Tutorial Logo in the old tutorial world in Minecraft, there's this massive Minecraft logo floating above the entrance from the tutorial meadow. If you reach the logo and mine your way inside of it, there's a nether portal waiting for you. And I'd imagine if you hadn't known this prior to getting to the logo, you'd, you'd be kind of scared. Female Dragon I'm assuming that when the Ender Dragon was first put into Minecraft, a lot of people assumed that it was a male, but Notch later confirmed that it is indeed a female, as proven by the fact that she drops an egg when killed. Igloo Basement In a rare chance on random seeds, there are igloos that, when their floor is broken, hide a weird basement under them. There's a chest with a golden apple in it and two small rooms that contain a villager and a zombie villager. There's also this sign that has arrows pointed to either room, which only amplifies the creepiness, it makes it seem like there's something here we just didn't know about that was here before us. Some think it's a small area just to show how some game mechanics work, such as infecting villagers, and some think it's just a weird little room to show spectacles, such as a cactus growing in a snow biome. Dimension Layers I'm not entirely sure what this subject is referring to, but I'm assuming it's referring to the end, and where it's actually located in relation to the void underneath bedrock. It's a video game with limitations in one world. I don't really think this needs that much heavy thinking. Pack.png When you create a world in Minecraft, there is this very small image that acts as a thumbnail for your world. This thumbnail is called Pack.png. 
For ages, people have wondered what the actual seed of this world is, and thanks to a plethora of people in the Minecraft community and tons of incredibly intelligent people, it's actually been found. Title Screen World. This is similar to Pack png In one of the updates for Minecraft, there is a blurred panoramic image in the background on the main menu. Just like Pack png people came together for a long time to determine what this world is, and they actually found it. Ender portals were made for Endermen. This is another subject I couldn't really find a lot about, but I think it's theorizing that ender portals were created specifically for endermen to travel in and out of their dimension, and not for you to go there and kill their leader. Void Beneath the Overworld If you break the bedrock at the bottom of the overworld, you will die no matter what game mode you're playing, and will be met by this vast, unending void. Um, again, there's not really anything to this. Like I said before, this is just game limitations. Any game ever will have, like, this disturbing looking void outside of its boundaries. And in every game, it's really creepy. Super Secret Settings In the 1.7.2 update, there was a setting introduced into the game called Super Secret Settings. It was just a bunch of these weird visual settings like black and white mode or upside down mode. I actually never knew about this until researching it. Killer Rabbit in the Java edition of Minecraft, there's a rare white bunny with red eyes that can spawn in your world. If you step within a 16 block radius of it, it will immediately begin hopping towards you to kill you. It has increased damage and speed compared to all other rabbits, so it isn't anything you want to take as a choke. Its inspiration, however, was most likely inspired by the killer rabbit from Monty Python. Zombie Villages There's a 2% chance that a village can spawn as a zombie village, making what could have been a calming atmosphere surrounded by fellow humans into a creepy experience where you see nothing but husks of what used to live there. Testificates When Minecraft first launched, all villagers had a name tag above their name that labeled them testificates. This is most likely to show that they were in their early stages and they were testing. Swamp Villages This is another subject I don't quite understand. I think it's referring to Swamp Villages not being added to the game? I, I don't really know. Raspberry Pi Edition So, a Raspberry Pi is a small piece of technology that allows people to learn programming and coding. I don't know how in the tin hells this walnut-sized thing does what it does, but it does. Anyway, there's a version of Minecraft created specifically for learning programming and coding called Minecraft Raspberry Pi Edition. It's made specifically for this tool. Mince Raft there is a 1 in whopping 10,000 chance that the title screen will say Mince Raft instead of Minecraft. Nether Reactor In the Pocket Edition, there is a structure that the player can create called the Nether Reactor, which upon completion would spawn a trove of rare and unattainable objects. However, when the Nether was brought into the game, this object became obsolete. Creepers are plants there's a theory that creepers are actually just some weird creatures created from plants and their explosions are used to spread spores to multiply. This is very convincing, mostly because Notch specifically stated that they're close to dead grass. Notch drops apples. If someone was to name themselves Notch, upon death they would drop an apple. This was integrated as a joke because until that point, and other than that specific scenario, apples were completely unattainable. Though, upon update 1.3.1, .1, players named Notch would no longer drop apples. Undead Giants There's a zombie giant that is 12 blocks tall in the game files that can only be spawned using console commands. It cannot ever be found naturally. Mobs Afraid of Cats there isn't really any reason behind this, uh, but most, if not all, of the mobs in the game are afraid of cats. This could either be some weird balancing technique or some joke added in by the devs. Hermaphrodite Mobs A lot of the mobs in the game have qualities of both genders, such as cows having both horns and udders, and not specifically stating, Every character and animal in Minecraft is homosexual because there's only one gender to choose from. Take that, homophobes! Aquatic Tutorial Ruins this is another subject that has basically no other speculation on the internet that I could find. In the aquatic update tutorial, underwater there are ruins of what look like a village, uh, begging the question of what used to be there. MD3 models. So I could be completely wrong about this, but I'm gonna try and give it a shot anyway. So in one of the earliest updates for Minecraft, the models used were these weird, chibi-looking characters. Of course, they were replaced by what we have now. Either that, or this subject is simply a reference to this oddly creepy old video by Notch, where he was importing what I think are Quake models into Minecraft, because MD3 models are just models used in Quake that were created by id.
Enderman Backwards Speech. All of the Enderman speech in the game is edited audio of someone talking. Entity 303. So supposedly there was an employee fired from Notch, and as revenge for this, him and a bunch of other people began hacking other people's worlds going by the name Entity 303. As creepy as this sounds, it's just about as legitimate as Herobrine. Abandoned Strongholds. Underground all over the map, there are these creepy abandoned structures called strongholds. They're crumbling ruins that usually have an end portal in the middle of them, but what makes them so creepy is their location and the implication that something was there before you made it. Endermen are corrupted humans. There's a theory that Endermen are soulless husks that used to be humans, which could be evident by their human-like shape and the noises they make sounding vaguely human, such as their screams and what sounds like gasps for air. Some theories go even further and bring in the previously mentioned Farlands, stating that humans who step into that disjointed area become corrupted just as much as the terrain. PC Gamer Demo in 2011, there was a Minecraft demo released exclusively to PC Gamer, which is either a specific website or outlet, or just a general notion of being PC exclusive. <coughs> the demo has weird shading, like a giant floating PC Gamer logo similar to the Minecraft logo in the old tutorial world, and cows, whom on their sides read PCG. Shadow Seeds For every map seed in the game, there is a shadow seed that opposes it. I'm assuming this means that the terrain is generated oppositely from the original seeds, though the layout of the biomes stay exactly the same. Post-apocalyptic future. There's a really cool fan theory that suggests that the entire world of Minecraft is a post-apocalyptic future. Long story short, there are scientists that discovered some type of infinitely renewable energy, though it got out of control and radioactively destroyed just about everything in time and space, decomposing every living human being along with locking certain areas in time and space, explaining why some animals are okay and some are mutated like the moose room. This would also explain why zombies exist along with skeletons and whatever undead grass creature the creeper is. Steve was the one that found this energy and is the only living human being left to bring back humanity. Woodland Mansion Cult Throughout the game, there are these massive woodland mansions you can find that are full of evil villagers capable of a plethora of different types of dark magic. These villagers are theorized to be outcasts from typical villager towns due to their dabbling in the dark arts. There are rooms with statues of idols, necromancers running about, and a room that looks like a meeting room, complete with a map as if they're planning something. An addition to this theory explains why the strongholds are so empty and barren, because these cultists drove out the people that maintained those areas, allowing Endermen to come through the portals. Brick Pyramids In one of the earliest stages of Minecraft, far away from the player's spawn point, there was a small chance that a massive brick pyramid would spawn. It would be built all the way up to the maximum height it could reach, as well as being the only way to get brick blocks at the time. Ruby Dung Ruby Dung is a strange looking game created by Notch before Minecraft. The weirdest part is how little is actually known about this game. Ravagers are mutated villagers. It is theorized that Ravagers are mutated villagers not only because of their obvious visual similarities, but because of the distorted villager noises that act as the Ravager noises, and both Ravagers and villagers prone to be attacked by the same type of enemies. Farther Lands Within the Farlands, there is an even deeper Farlands, where the distorted effects are amplified, making the terrain resemble that of TV color bars. Monoliths. Near the end of one of the earliest versions of Minecraft, it was possible for random parts of the terrain to bug out and jut all the way up to the max build height, making these massive, weird terrain pillars that generated ore normally, but were completely flat on top. Cave Ambience. There are a bunch of these incredibly creepy cave sounds that used to be in Minecraft, and along with discs 11 and 13, some theorize that they tell the story of a group of miners that were killed in a mining incident or through natural means. I'm pretty sure it's nothing but ambience, but it's interesting to read what people are interpreting from it, as well as incredibly disturbing listening to these sound effects. Guardians are mechanical. 
There are these massive one-eyed things called guardians that shoot lasers from their eyes. Some theorize that these are actually robots due to their appearance and laser shooting, but others say they're closer to an abolith, this fish creature from Dungeons and Dragons. I could see why someone would think that these are robots mostly due to the metal square looking appearance of it, but you have to take into consideration the art style. Steve Villager Hybrid. Only from updates 1.00 to 1.1, there was a strange mob that was a hybrid between Steve and a villager. The actual reason for this thing is unknown, but most speculate that it was to test villagers due to its short lifespan and broken model. Entity Hanging. So I think this is just acknowledging that for one update only, there was a sound file added named entity.hanging.pop, which may have attention drawn to it because of its dark implications. Giant Fossils. I had no idea these were even in the game, but you can find these giant skeletal remains all over the map. There are six different types, but rather than being shaped like certain animals or creatures, they're oddly human shaped with the square skulls that are similar to Minecraft heads and rectangular shaped rib cages. The theory behind these is that they're the skeletal remains of the giants mentioned earlier in this video, adding what used to be cut content into canon. Rescue a ghast from the nether. There's an achievement in the game called Uneasy Alliance, which asks you to bring the ghast from the nether to the overworld and kill it. Plot twist? <coughs> Netherrack is made of flesh. If you look closely at the texture for Netherrack, you can see not only an overwhelming amount of red and pink pixels that look like meat, but a few pixels that are the same arrangement as eyeballs on Steve's face. Dolphin Animal Cruelty Notch stated that the ability to ride dolphins will not be present because it can be classified as animal cruelty, despite the ability to slaughter animals and ride pigs in the same game. Seventy two DAQA accounts. Minecraft usernames are similar to any other website or online service, where if you choose a username, it is yours, meaning that it cannot be duplicated at all. On the exact same day, 72 Minecraft accounts were created, and all of them had the exact same username, DAQA. It's unknown as to what these are, but many speculate that they're simply developer accounts, the DA standing for developer account or deleted slash deactivated account, while QA could stand for quality assurance or something similar. Steve is a god. People apparently theorize Steve as a god for a multitude of reasons. He spawns with no blocks over him, implying he was sent down from some higher plane. He is able to punch trees and break them with his bare hands. He can fly on command, he has all-knowing knowledge, there are achievements given to the player upon killing the Wither and the Ender Dragon called The End and The Beginning. Beacons, lights that shoot into the heavens, only being able to work when built inside pyramids, which is important because Egyptians are considered to be descendants of God, and no heaven dimension existing, implying you were sent to this earthly realm to cure it and cannot go back to where you came from. Vexes are lost souls. Vexes are these winged creatures that are summoned by evokers, but some believe that these are souls trapped in the realm and being summoned by evokers. Evoke, by definition, speaks of summoning spirits or deities, so this, in combination with these strange ethereal noises, can make for a convincing argument. Air.ogg In the Minecraft Infinity update, there was a file titled Air.ogg added into the game files. When the audio beeps were converted into an image, the image showed a screenshot of a screen, and on the screen it reads, This is a very long phrase that hopefully is not in any dictionary. Pre-classic censored videos In 2009, Notch posted a tech test for Cave Game, Minecraft before it was called Minecraft. This video, along with most of his old videos that were posted on the internet, are blocked in all countries. Uh, hello everyone. I'm in. I'm the one that created the video you just watched. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, since it's a combination of two different popular subjects, I'm really hoping that this video blows up, uh, even in the smallest way possible. Um, I mean, I guess if it doesn't, I'm gonna look like a dick right about now, but it was still fun to make, I guess. If you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate if you, uh, checked out any of the other videos that I put a lot of time into, but, um, otherwise, I love you. You have a good night.